Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about um, an ideal integrator circuit. Um, I have drawn the schematic for the ideal integrator. It consists of an op amp uh, connected to a resistor and a capacitor, as shown in, as shown in the figure. And um, assuming that we provide a, uh, a time varying input signal, VI of t, uh, we should get the output voltage as a function of time as well, V out of t. And the idea behind an integrator is that uh, the, the function performed will be the integral. So the output will essentially be the integral uh, of the input signal over a specified period of time. Uh, sometimes, I haven't drawn it in here, but you could, uh, you could see sometimes the integrator appear with a compensation resistor. If we were to connect a compensation resistor to it, in this case, it will have value R. Again, a compensation resistor is trying to eliminate offset voltages due to the input bias currents. And the idea behind it is that it needs to be of a value so that the resistancing at both input terminals of the op-amp will match each other. And in this case, uh, the resistance for DC offset calculations, the capacitor will be an open at DC, and so the resistancing at the negative input terminal will be R, so we could connect the compensation resistor on the positive input terminal of value R as well. Uh, that resistor will not affect anything else in the um, in the equations for the circuit. So we can leave it in there or we can remove it if not needed. Uh, uh, let's analyze the circuit. There are two possible ways that we can analyze this type of circuit. We can do analysis in the time domain, but since we have uh, frequency dependent uh, components like capacitors whose impedance is a function of frequency, uh, we could also analyze it in the frequency domain, and that's typically going to be an easier route. We're going to do both of them just for the sake of example. Uh, first thing we can notice is that um, because we are applying uh, uh, input voltage V in uh, through the resistor R, the value of the voltage in both the, the positive and the negative input terminals of the op-amp is going to be zero volts. Uh, and there is going to be no current flowing into any one of those terminals because we are assuming an ideal op-amp for our analysis purposes. And so all of the current that flows through the resistor is the current that also flows through this capacitor. I'm going to label it IC of T. So the current through the capacitor and it's going to generate a voltage across that capacitor. So I'm going to label VC of T. Now, uh, there are two ways that we can express the value of IC of T. Once we can express it in terms of the, uh, the resistor R, so it's the voltage across the resistor, which is V in divided by R, since the voltage on the other end of the resistor is zero. Or we can express it in terms of uh, the capacitor, and in that case it will be C dVc as a function of time dt. The two expressions for the current should be equal to each other, and so we can equate them, and we can say C dVc of t dt is equal to Vi of t divided by R. And I can uh, solve this equation for dVc of t, and I will have that this is equal to 1 over Rc Vi as a function of time dt. And if I integrate on both sides of the equation, I'll be left with uh, Vc of t equals uh, 1 over Rc is a constant, so it will come out of the integral, integral from 0 to t um, of V in. I will have to change my uh, constant of integration since I'm going from 0 to t, so Vi of tau d tau. Um, one thing that I uh, haven't mentioned is that potentially there is a um, an initial voltage Vc of zero, and that will be the the constant of integration. Now, if we look at the uh, circuit, we can notice that the output voltage V out is exactly equal to negative the value of Vc, since again the negative input terminal of the op amp is sitting at uh, virtual ground. And so I can express then my output voltage as a function of time as the inverse minus 1 over Rc times the integral from 0 to t of Vi of tau d tau plus um, the initial voltage V out at time 0. And so this will be the equation for the ideal integrator. This will be the time domain analysis 
if I had chosen to do the frequency domain analysis, frequency domain, I will um, replace the value of the components by their impedances. The impedance of the resistor R is equal to R. The impedance of a capacitor of value C is equal to uh, uh, 1 over J omega C, which I'll just write over here. And so I, I have a, a, an op amp and two impedances, one uh, in the line of the input, one in the feedback. And we can see that this is the generalized expression or the generalized form for a non-inverting, excuse me, for an inverting amplifier. And so I can write the general expression for my output voltage, phase or output voltage in this case, as a negative uh, ZF divided by Z in, uh, feedback impedance over input impedance. And uh, this will just be negative 1 over J omega C divided by R. Um, O oh, times P in, I forgot to do right. So let me go ahead and since I'm doing for output voltage as opposed to gain, I will need to multiply this times the phase or input. So negative one over J omega C divided by R times phase or input. And I can rewrite this as negative uh, one over RC times one over J omega. And the reason times V in, the reason why I've done that is because uh, from our um, Laplace transforms or phasor transforms equivalently, we know that in the phasor domain, division by J omega corresponds to integration over time in the time domain. And so um, multiplication times one over J omega or division by J omega in the frequency domain translates as an integral in the time domain. So I call uh, from that expression V out equals minus one over RC times one over J omega times phase or V in, I could also solve for V out as a function of time and I will obtain the same expression as above, minus one over RC, integral from zero to T, V I of tau, D tau plus V out of initial um, initial voltage. Now, uh, in practice, there's nothing wrong with, uh, or in theory, I should say, there's nothing wrong with this circuit. If we were to plot uh, the magnitude response of the frequency domain, which is V out over V in will be minus one over RC times one over J omega. Uh, we will see that um, when we calculate the magnitude, the J will disappear, but we will have something that is inversely proportional to omega. And so basically, um, something that will decrease as omega or as f increases. Um, so this is what the, the function of integration looks like in the frequency domain. Now notice that the, the magnitude um, of the, the magnitude response of the circuit increases as the frequency decreases and uh, it, it never flattens out, it always continues to increase as long as you have an ideal integrated circuit, which means that if you um, have signals at very low frequencies or particularly at DC, then you will have basically uh, an amplification by factor of infinity. Just by looking at the equation, if your omega is equal to zero, that means uh, your magnitude is equal to infinity, uh, which is, is not good for an amplifier. Uh, essentially, the output voltage will not reach infinity, it will just saturate. And we can see that just from the circuit structure. We have a capacitor in the feedback path, and so at DC the capacitor will behave as an open circuit. Um, and therefore you, you will be essentially breaking your feedback path. You will be running your circuit in an open loop configuration, which is going to cause the op amp to saturate. Now, one might say, well... Um, I can still integrate my AC signals if they are pure AC signals, as long as I don't have any DC offset in my, in my input signal, I should be fine. But in reality, as we have previously seen, there are always some uh, sources of offset errors for op amps. And so any uh, small offset error is going to cause your op amp to saturate. And therefore, in practice, this is not, um, it's, it's not a very practical circuit. 
I want to come down to it. Now we can make some modifications to it in order to make it work in practical applications. And that's something that we're going to be looking at in the next video. For now I'm going to write down as the main limitation of this uh, particular configuration is that um, as the frequency approaches zero, V out, the ideal V out approaches infinity, which causes uh, op amp saturation. And the four um, small input offsets will cause saturation of op amp, and therefore uh, the circuit will not be operating as intended. Uh, before we move on to see how we can modify the circuit to apply it in practice, uh, we've looked at the the uh, characteristic in the frequency domain. In the time domain, what we will expect to see from this circuit is uh, a perfect integration. Let's imagine that I have a uh, square signal that I apply at the input. And so let's imagine put it in yellow. Let's imagine I have something like this. Again, it cannot have a DC offset, and that's why I'm centering it around zero. But let's imagine that this was my input signal with respect to time, uh, what I expect to see at the output is basically the, the integral of that signal. Uh, since there is a minus sign, that will imply that whenever I have a uh, positive value for my input signal, I have a negative slope for my output signal. And whenever I have a negative value for my output signal, I have a positive slope for my input signal. But in essence, I will expect to see a, a perfectly triangular wave Again, assuming that my op amp doesn't saturate. Um, and that's it. That will be the, um, the ideal integrated circuit. Next video, we're going to take a look at a, a more practical version of the integrator. Thank you.